Hey, this is Dave, and welcome to my DJI Goggles Teardown. Now, I've been looking on the internet for an actual video on how to tear down the DJI Goggles and what was inside, but I actually couldn't find one. I did find a couple of blogs on it, such as this blog here on My First Drone. It does go through some of the beginning stages of tearing down the goggles and shows some pictures but it actually stops right here and doesn't get into the main block and what's inside it. It does give some interesting theory though on how it works and it's a good read if you want to take a look at it I'll put a link under my video. So now let's get into actually tearing it down on camera and look into every single section and see what's inside. I'm going to turn it upside down because there's two rubber tabs right in here and then there are ten plastic tabs that have to be removed. So the rubber tabs are the easiest to get to first. They're right here and you can just pull them out. There they are right there. Now we can start to work on the plastic parts. So if you get your fingernail up underneath there or something you can kind of pull up and remove the tab so you can see the tab right there I just removed and okay nine more to go I'm gonna start working my way around okay I'm gonna turn it around so I can get to the outer edge right here and what you do is just pry up with a some kind of soft tool you don't want to scratch the plastic I'm using a popsicle stick So there's the cover. Let's take a closer look at it. This is the rubber face mask with plastic backing. So if you ever have to change it, that's how you do it. So next there are six screws that need to be removed to take the back cover off. So this last screw down here is the warranty screw. It has a label on it and in order to get the screw out you have to mark up that label so I just call that the warranty screw now the back cover should come off and there it is there's the inside and let's take a look at the back cover and there's a lens right here for the proximity detector the proximity detector cuts off the power to the screens when the goggles aren't on your face and therefore saves the battery. There's a closer look at the proximity detector board. Now at the top you can see the circuit board or circuit boards that have the processors, gyros, and the OcuSync radios are probably in there. The blog that I'm looking at actually stopped at this point and didn't go any further. Okay next I see some screws right here in the corners here, here, here and up at the top here so four screws that look like they will allow the size to remove to get those four screws out you need a screwdriver or something like this that has a bunch of bits with it because they're very small hard to find a bit that fits them I also used a pair of tweezers to finish pulling out the screw afterward I'll show you how I did it so you start by just lifting the corners loose like this and then there are a couple tabs right in here that you can push on okay once the corners are loose it usually just pops loose like that but if it doesn't you can go down in and push on these tabs and it will eventually come off so the side over here it didn't really have anything on it there was nothing there except uh, there was a speaker that's about all but that didn't have to be removed it sits right in here this side it has the speaker as well but this is the side that has the trackpad okay the trackpad ribbon cable just pulled right out but as you can see it does have a little like latch assembly here that moves up and down so here's the button assembly I thought that was gonna fall off but it's actually melted right on there it looks like it is anyway it's attached 
by melting some plastic. Looks like they did the same thing for the LED indicators. These are just sort of like light pipes that uh, send the LED signal through here to the surface where you can see it. Okay, so next we have, looks like six screws, three on each side to get the front cover off. So I'm going to start working on those. It doesn't look like they're going to be too hard to get off. Okay, getting the third one out, and then I'm going to do the same thing to the other side, obviously. I was about ready to give up, and I pried and pried, and finally I found there were some tabs in here. Then I got my popsicle stick in there. Let's take a look at this now that we got it off. There's all the tabs right there that I was dealing with. Now it looks like there's some screws here, here, there, around the edges. Alright, and two more here on the end. I'll just get those off camera. Be right back. Well, it looks like this top is going to have to come off first because there are some screws down here into the bottom section. Looks like I'm going to have to remove these two screws because this black piece is screwed to the top right here, the part where the hinge goes in, the hinge assembly goes in. So I'm going to have to take off these two at least. So I'll do that next. Oh yeah, I can already feel it loosening up. And there it is, comes off easy now. Let's see, any wires attached to it? No, no wires attached to that at all. So there's the whole thing, it just has this black plastic sort of cover that went over where the hinge plugs in. Other than that, there were no other wires or connectors. This is the button here to release the hinge, that's all that does. So this is the top side here. We did find out that's the proximity detector. So this must be the OcuSync section, uh, which is what communicates with the drone. So what I noticed right away, there's actually four antenna connections. So we have one, two, three, four. So these right here, these sockets actually pass the antenna connection to the headband. So antennas in the headband, I thought that was interesting. And then these connections here actually run to two antennas on each side right here. So yeah, the antennas for the OcuSync are right here in the front. This right here is the fan. I can see that that spins. So that's the fan right there. And then this right here looks like a transmitter heat sink. I think most of us know by now that there is a sort of a plate of glass or I don't know if it's glass but sort of like a mirror that's on a 45 degree angle. It'd be nice to get in there and actually see it uh, rather than just theorize about it. So I'll see what I can do. Okay I see there are two screws way down in here. One there, one here, and then there's two more in the front. One here and one here and that should get the bottom cover off. Okay, it looks like my hobby grade screwdriver can get these two quite easily in the front. I had to use this screwdriver to get the ones in the back. For some reason, they didn't want to go with the hobby grade screwdrivers. All right, now the back should come off. Looks like it's going to. Maybe it's just being held, the button here is holding it, I think. Oh, no, I think it's this ribbon cable. It's pulling on this ribbon cable right there. You see that? This side over here looks free except for the speaker wire. So I'll have to take care of those two things next. Okay, the ribbon cable looks like it's got a piece of tape. Yeah, just a piece of tape keeping it from coming out. I might be able to pull it loose. Let's see. Right there's the tape. Now it has a little tab here. 
and I should be able to just yep there it is I rocked it out pardon me for getting off camera it's glued and stuck to the speaker wire now the speaker wires look like they'll unplug yeah just unplug that I'll do the same on the other side to this speaker and hopefully I don't have to take off this ribbon cable now let's see if that yeah it looks like it's coming yep there it is it's out and here's all the screws I've got so far these were the four that were holding on the, the last piece there the cover so here is the wheel here that controls the interpupillary distance the IPD and you can see it is on a little rubber belt there you can clearly see that now okay now I'm trying to look and see what the easiest way to get a look inside it looks like this plastic box is one unit all the way around there's a piece of tape right here that's holding on the ribbon cable for the monitor and I was pulling that back and I noticed the cover lifted up can you see that the cover is lifting up right there alright I'm just gonna go for this screw here that was sort of loose already just taking that out and see if that moves yeah that lifts right up now There's some screws right here, so I'm going to have to take those out, probably. Now that looks like that lifts right up now. Yeah, that comes right off. So that's one of the antennas right there for the OcuSync transmission. But now there's another screw right here. So that pretty much frees up all of the back and one side. But it looks like there's also some screws right here going into this circuit board. So they may have to come out, and I need to get the other antenna, probably take this screw off. So I'll do that. Okay, I just got that screw out, the tiny screw, and now there's some tape here. Okay, now it looks like we're down to these three screws, and one is underneath some of this RTV sort of silicon rubber stuff. Now I've already taken out this screw and this screw and lifted this tape. Now there's this ribbon cable. So I need to release that, but I can't take this off the monitor very easily. It looks like they've got some tape here and then it's maybe plugged into a socket there, I hope. Similar to some of the other ones. Don't know if I can just pull that out or not. Yeah, looks like it's coming out. Yep, it came out. Okay. It's just this front edge here. I think we might be able to take a peek in there. There it is, guys. And gals. We know we have some engineering gals out there. And you can see you got a piece of dirt on the mirror already. But there it is indeed. It's a mirror. And so one of the monitors that my friends right up here see that that is a monitor believe it or not that is thin as a credit card right there that's one of the monitors and you can notice that it goes more than halfway across I just wonder if that mirror comes out okay check this out I got the uh, tweezers right here and that mirror does move. It looks like it's in a slot. Yep, there it comes. Well, that's good because it'll make it easy to clean it before I stick it back in. So there it is right there. Yes, that, indeedy, that is a mirror. But a translucent mirror. Okay, now we can go in here and we can actually see the other monitor on the top. You see it right there? I'll move it back and forth a little bit. But you can see the monitor goes more than halfway across on the top too. It starts over here on, the, on this side and goes all the way past the middle over to here. So these two monitors actually overlap in the middle. I wonder if there's any polarization involved here. I'd say there is. 
some polarization and you can see the front of the box there now too is completely sealed there's this kind of a sort of glass over that too that the two lenses slide on so there's no way to get in from the front and if you look at that blog that I showed you in the beginning of the video he's got all the theory on how this works and I gotta say he was right just a 45 degree mirror so one monitor is facing down so this is the top right here facing down and then this one goes on the back so it's facing directly at that left eye is there any polarization that's a good question okay uh, the polarization is there it's actually on these pieces of glass behind the optics behind the lenses so the way you find out is here's a set of polarized sunglasses as you can see now watch as I rotate these sunglasses see that go black that totally blacks out that eye and if I go to this one it's still visible so that means these are you know 90 degrees out of phase they're polarized so that's how they're blocking one monitor from one eye and that's how they do it so polarization right there and of course also, there has to be polarization in another place, I assume, and I think that's probably on the monitor screen. So I couldn't find any polarization on the mirror itself. See, if I turn that, nothing happens. So as far as I can see, no polarization whatsoever on the mirror. So if there's any more, it has to be on a film on the monitor screens. One opposite the other. So there you go. That's how it works. Ah, let's put it back together before it falls apart even worse. Okay, so I've got it sitting back in the bottom of the case. And the tricky part of that was just getting this plastic holder here around that button again on the button board. That was the tricky part. And then I'll have to get this back on and plug in the speakers. So these wires here in the speakers, but first got to get the four screws here, here, and in the back, back on. And then after that, it should be fairly easy to get the rest on. So let's see if it still works. Looks like it's coming on. So I hope you found that teardown interesting. And there's many more RC videos on my channel, so take a look. And don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notify checkbox. Thanks for watching.